Welcome to Photography BB's Artistry Effects for Photoshop. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at how to use the Painter Studio 2026 effect. Let's jump on into Photoshop and see how to use this versatile painting effect. This effect comes in three orientations. We have open here a landscape orientation file, and this effect also includes a square orientation and a portrait orientation as well. So we're, right now we're looking at the horizontal orientation and to get your image into the template to run the effect, all we have to do in the layers palette right here is just double click on the top layer thumbnail right here, not on the text of the layer, but right on the thumbnail to open up a smart object. So here's our smart object and all we're going to do is go to the menu file, place embedded, and choose the photo that you would like to work with. For this effect, I'm going to use this photo right here. And we select the photo and just click place. That will bring the photo into the template. Now, as you can see for this particular photo that I'm working with, it doesn't fill the landscape uh, orientation template. So you can just drag on the little anchor points to zoom your image and fit the template any way you like. And I, for one, would like to see this as a horizontal uh, image right here. So I just dragged it out to look like that. And then to finally place the image into the template, we just need to click on the little check mark right here. And that places the image. Now to run the effect, it's very easy. All we're going to do is close up this smart object layer and click save. So we're going to click the little X right here to close the smart object. And we're going to click save and Photoshop will do the rest for us. Okay, and there we go. We have our painted image here. And we do have a lot of optional controls to work with. So let's go through the layers palette right here and we'll see all of the different things we can do to customize this. We'll start with optional controls right up here. We can toggle this layer group open. And you'll see we have some layer groups inside. We have one for toning, colors, and textures as well. So if we open up toning, we have some options to darken the image, brighten the image, add vibrance, or add contrast. And the way you activate those is just by turning on the visibility of those layers. See, we can darken the image, we can brighten the image, we can add some vibrance to it. It's a little difficult to tell in the video tutorial, but that actually looks very nice. And one of the things we can do with any of these layers is double click on the adjustment layer icon right here and we can make further changes. So if we really want to crank up the saturation, we could really do that. You can see how it affects the image this way. Actually, I like it with a lot of saturation for this image. So let's go with that. It gives it more of a painted look in my opinion. So we'll keep that one on. And of course we can add contrast, turn that on and off, and we can play with those as well. But I'll keep it like that for now. So I'll close up the toning layer group right here and we'll go into the colors layer group. So we here, we can add a color mood to the overall image and just by turning on the visibility of the color mood layer like that. And of course we can double click on the color swatch to change it to any type of color we want. So if we wanted a little warmer, we could go there, a little cooler, we could go there. And of course you can adjust the uh, layer opacity. If you like the cool kind of look, but it's too much, we can bring that down a little bit there and you can see the effect that it's having on the image. I'm going to leave it as the default without that color mood on. Uh, we also have a black and white uh, layer here. So some painted images look wonderful in black and white. You can click that to toggle that on and off and see how you like that effect as well. And then we have some sort of special color toning layers right here, 10 different uh, color toning layers, and you can turn them on and off to see how they affect your image. That one's pretty good actually, number two. So we'll close up the color uh, layer subgroup here. And next we have the textures folder and we'll toggle that open. And this gives us the texture, I'll zoom in here so you can see the texture over the image. So right now we have kind of a canvas texture applied to the image, turn that off. You'll see we just have the smooth painted image right there. Turn on the next one, sandstone effect here. We've got some paper effects down here as well. So a lot of different things you can play with. The paper effect looks pretty good with this image. Let's keep that on actually. So we'll close up this layer group and then we can close up the optional controls and move into the paint controls. 
So we have various outlines for the detail in the image, and I'll let you explore those to see what they do. But if you click on the visibility of them, you can see that they affect the image in different ways. And those are just the, uh, the details, the outline details. And of course, any of these, you can click on the layer to make it active and adjust the opacity of the layer to strengthen or reduce the strength of that particular layer's effect on your image. But this group down here, the paint style options, this is where we're going to have the most fun with this effect. So if we toggle that open right there, we have a number of different paint style options. And I will let you go through these to play with them, but I'll just show you what they do. If you turn off option one, which is on by default, you can turn on option two. That gives us a different type of paint style. Turn that one off and turn on option three. Gives us more of a sprayed kind of look there and so on down the list. This is one with nice brush strokes as well. And you can also combine these. So if you like this particular one, and let's say you wanted to add option seven, you can add that one in. Uh, let's say the first one is a little too pronounced. We can bring the opacity of that one down. So that's option seven by itself, but we can sort of fade in option four to a point that we like it like that. So you can combine uh, paint styles or you can use them individually. It's totally up to you. And it will also depend on the image that you're working with as well. So I'll just close that one up. And lastly, we have the background paper color. Of course, we can double click on the swatch and you can make it anything you would like. Make it black, you can make it a color, you get a nice, I don't know, bright yellow. But you can experiment with that to your liking. And then just click OK to save that. So that is Painter Studio 2026. There's a lot to play with in there. So I encourage you to explore the layer groups and have a lot of fun with this one. Thanks for choosing Artistry Effects by Photography BB and happy photoshopping.